Hi everyone, I'm Caleb and welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be talking about yu gi -Oh! and his first debut solo album, Point of View You, and the uh, title track, or the two singles if you will, All Your Fault and I Want You Around, which were made into music videos as well. Um, before I get into it, do check out my video on Bam Bam's solo debut album which just came out a few days ago and some feelings I gave about JYP entertainment in general. With that said, let's go into who yu gi -Oh is. He is the magne of GOT7, uh, which means the youngest member of GOT7. Since they left JYP entertainment, he was signed to AOMG, which is a label run by Jay Park, who was also from JYP as well. It was announced in February that he was signed with them. On the 3rd of June, he announced his solo debut with this album, which is mostly produced by Grey, who is also under um, the same label, and with two tracks produced by Cha Cha Malone, if that's what you, how you pronounce it, who um, co-runs the international label with um, J Park, Higher Music. Besides that, even for the, the other tracks on the album, four tracks with collaborations, you know, uh, he's also collaborating with AOMG artists, which is pretty cool. You know, I, I think it's what for one body of work, I think this is the first time I've ever seen where it's like literally collaborations with artists of the same label and I'm interested to see what sound it gets. I'm not very familiar with AOMG artists in general. I I guess their music is quite, in a sense, alternative to like not mainstream pop. So that's why I'm, I never listened to them before. But now that, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh! is part of this label, I am into, you know, seeing what each of these artists under this label show, you know. I, I, and I'm guessing that you know, they do have different sides. It's not, you know, all hip hop or all rap, you know, some can sing and do other things. Um, for example, with Yu-Gi-Oh! After announcing that he was signed to the label, he actually did release a dance video performance to franchise, a track by Travis Scott. And I think it's, for me, it's like the first time I've ever seen him being, you know, taking the, the individual spotlight and I don't know, showing his dance move in that way because I, I mean, I've really, I, I think God Seven's dance is dances are pretty, yeah, they're pretty different. It's not that they're bad or simplistic or anything. It's just a different genre. So I, I think it was really good for me, as like a quite new God Seven fan, um, to actually see him do something uh, that was beyond what I expected. And then now with his debut EP which includes seven tracks, you know, um, with two music videos. I think that's an, quite an overkill. I mean, even though the rollout was quite quick, you know, because it was all in June, announced on 3rd June. Yeah, he released the album on June 11. So it's quite quick, like um, in terms of the rollout. But, you know, again, it has all the different things of what a you know, K-pop artist would have for release the photo album, the album itself and all that. So I enjoy that, you know, they do recognize that, you know, he is more mainstream. I would, I'm guessing because compared to the rest of them under uh, AOMG, he seems to be the more mainstream artist here and definitely they want to package him or at least um, push him more in the direction. Yeah, so they, I'm, I'm glad they did that. So now I will be getting into the music video for his single, All Your Fault, featuring Grey. Um, and then I'll be going to the track list, which also includes the other song that he uh, did release with a music video uh, titled I Want You Around, uh, which was pre-released on June 11th. And then after that, the rest of the tracks, as well as the showcase stage on NBC. This is the usual program for me. So here we go. <laughs> First off, we have the music video, All Your Fault, featuring Grey. This has a short write-up of what the music video is. It is 
about him playing a man who it becomes vengeful after his lover leaves him for another man. Basically in the process, yu gi -Oh is trying to hunt down his ex current partner who is played by Grey and things get bloody. So, well, I mean, maybe this is his acting side that I've never seen before, personally. But, let's check it out. I don't know, this seems... This part seems very God 7, you know, like it, I can hear this in the sound awesome track. I mean, like a bit R&B ish sound. I think this is definitely pop radio friendly. I, I, so far, I'm hearing the sound, there's a build up as well. You can tell the music video direction is so different for AOMG versus, uh, at least for him under A1G versus, you know, when they were doing under God, as God 7 under JYP. This seems more storytelling focused and no, no choreo included in this. Oh great, I love his rap. I know he has collaborated with other K-pop artists as well, but I've never actually seen him like in a music video or like, you know, thing. so... It's my first introduction to him, so wow, enjoy that. I like the build up. I wish it was more hard hitting though, you know, after the build up. Like this part, this is all your fault. This part, I feel like it could have been more, I don't know, more instrumental because there, there was indeed a build up. It's kind of like soft for like something that's so harsh, like the visuals are just, you know, about the car chase and you know murder scene and it seems like there's some uh, outrage of emotions and it I don't know there seems to be some mismatch for me in terms of the energy of the music video and the song seems quite soft yeah. but I enjoy it as a song itself yeah but I can clearly tell the story without you know the pre-contact if I didn't have the pre-contact Oh, the ellipse. Yes, classic of yu gi -Oh to do that. Oh, interesting. They change it up here. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty soft. Not what I expected to begin with. Yeah. Oh, ends with him. Oh, like uh, basically back to the start of the music video. I see. And then we credits again, which I love. To give credits to you know wherever it's due. I love the music video like direction. The fact that they chose not to show the dance choreography, but rather just focus on the storytelling and make it very movie like. It fits with him. He's able to carry the concept very well. That's good. But I feel there's some mismatch between the energy that was giving in the music video and the song itself. Because the, the song there is a build up, but it, it's just not hard hitting. And both on it, their own work okay, but when you put it together, it, there's, it, the energy doesn't mismatch. I feel like if they if they wanted to go with this kind of a bit more soft of a track, it didn't have to be like car chase. It didn't have to be like murder scene and all this kind of like you know more uh, gro not grotesque, but um, yeah, it didn't have to be so adrenaline rushing kind of uh, visuals but like it could be more of maybe a post breakup and you know him drinking at the bar and then you know maybe like telling his sorrows to uh, someone else you know or um, uh, in his room you know throwing the photos on the ground or something like that and less of like a car chase yeah and that and that comes to mind more like something like roses on the ground kind of a visual for me that would make more sense with the song and not really this. But let me know in the comments below what you think. Maybe you really appreciate how it's being done. Not that I don't appreciate it, but like if you think that it is so, you know, this matches very well, do let me know. I, I'm, I would love to hear your opinion on this, but that's my, that's my thoughts on it personally. So let's go now into the track list of the EP. So first we have I Want You Around featuring Devita, which has the music video as well, which I'll be talking about and watching later. And then second, Running Through The Rain, All About You featuring Loco, who is also under AOMG, Love The Way featuring J-Park and Punchnello, who are also under AOMG, 
and falling in love and when you fall. I read somewhere that the tracks, the way they are listed, because I, I take particular notice into like how it's framed and what kind of flow is being identified. Is it by the lyrics, by the vibe of the song, or you know, by the significance or the message behind the song? It conveys a story of, in itself of someone's love story from the start and to probably the end. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, I would love to see how that works out because all your fault is in the middle. So I guess I want you around and running through the rain are gonna be more in the route of getting into a relationship and the, what comes with it, you know, the, the highs, the butterflies, and then most of the rest of the EP is dwelling on the sadness. Let's see how this all works out. Um, and actually, in an interview with Mary Claire uh, for a photo shoot, yu gi also opened up about, you know, him getting exposed to uh, new music, new dancers, and also getting to know more of himself. And he's trying to put himself in this light in, you know, as a solo artist right now. And I think that's good, you know, I, I love it when they try to experiment something new. Of course, sometimes it's like a hit and miss or like, there is a risk involved, right? If the concept doesn't work well with the artist, doesn't fit well, and then especially when it's a debut, right? Oh, it's just gonna mess up the... It's, it, there is a high chance that it's gonna ruin any chances of the subsequent releases being impactful enough, right? But so far from the music video, I am seeing that, okay, you know, he has the chops to act in this style of uh, filming, but uh, as, and, and he has chops for, you know, this kind of vocals, uh, soft music, and I like the direction of music. It's my kind of music that I love, and I think general public would definitely get with it on the first listen, at least. Um, even at least Agassiz as well. Then, and yeah, so he also said that, you know, he wants to show more sides of himself, and he wants to be a person that, you know, grows and makes an effort to continuously grow. And I think that's something we want to see from artists. We don't want them to be churning out the same material over and over again, um, just because it gets them the views, gets them the likes, gets them the awards. But to continuously try out new things for the fans and, you know, general music lovers like me to enjoy and see different sides of them. And that's gives me more respect for these kind of artists. So with that, we'll get into the first track of the album, which is I Want You Around, featuring the Vita, and we'll be watching the music video. Oh, same dark vibes. Oh, it's more trapped centric. And can I say, I appreciate that they put captions already like with English and even Chinese? Wow. Oh, this is, isn't this Jeju Island where so many artists been filming videos here? Oh, I love that this, yes, this fits the song, right? The smoke, the fog, and the mysteriousness of the song. Actually, as an opening, I think that makes sense. And then now the fog kind of clears a little bit. And this outfit is so classic of um, Yu-Gi-Oh! Yeah, it's supposed to be more happy, right? It's about getting in love with someone. Yeah, you literally want the person around. But I don't know, again, dark concept for something that's about, you know, like you wanna, you wanna love someone. It seems like you wanna dig, like just now there was like a grave shot and it seems like you wanna bury the person in the ground or something. And this seems quite, Ominous with the dark figures at the back. Oh, the Vita right now. Well, I guess she sings primarily English. That's nice. Yeah, what's with this grave shot? I wonder if they're gonna sing together. I guess they're playing lovers in this music video. I like the simplicity of the instrumentation. Opposed to their, you know, their vocals that are more length pulled out. I like that contrast. Yeah. Oh, and then we have some interpretative choreography, like uh, the improvisation. Nice. 
Oh, I love that. The harmonies. Ooh. And then the runs, the vocal runs. Very simple, which reflects the simplicity of the, you know, the instrumentation itself. Like, you know, the different, the scenes are not so complex, you know, it's quite understandable what it is. Right. Wow. I wonder why it looks like a droplet at above. Like, it looks like he's looking at heaven, but I know it's, she's above it, right? And she's looking down at him. Interesting. And also with the credits, which I love. Yeah, that's great. In terms of the two music videos, I prefer this one. Yeah, um, in the sense that it matches the song more. I feel he and Davita have more of a synergy when it comes to the collaborative part of the song. As compared to Grey where it's just, okay, you know, it's quite structured, right? At least with Davita, I like when they, you know, have this intertwining moments where she's taking one line, he's taking one line, or they're singing together and in harmony. I love that. Uh, I love those kind of collaborative efforts on tracks, right? Um, but I guess I understand why um, he made All Your Fault, the title track, or in the sense, maybe I would guess the title track because it's released with the album itself. Um, I guess I understand why, because that is more pop radio friendly and more mainstream friendly as well. As compared to this, this is definitely more hip hop, trap sounding. So it kind of segments the audience as well. Um, but as an opener to the album, I think this is good because, you know, it, like I said, simplistic instrumentation. Um, and it, you know, it, it slowly creeps in, you know, with his vocals and then with the runs. So it's a good introduction. And then emotionally wise, as in terms of the writing, I guess, you know, it's about the beginnings of love. You, you telling someone that you literally want them around you. That makes sense as an introduction to the album. Now we go with Running Through the Rain. Okay, this seems brighter compared to I Want You Around. At least in terms of the instrumentation. Yes. Hey, I love this very jazzy rhythm. Yes, it's definitely more bright. But as a transition between I Want You Around and All Your Fault, it seems like it, you know, it goes from dark bright and then all the way dark again. Maybe you just want to provide as many colors as you can to the album. Oh, I love when they have the key change. Okay. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Follows in suit with the lyrical meaning of the first track. You know, now it's that you, you are running through the rain for someone. Okay. I can see a clear path in terms of the direction of writing. Oh, I love that little guitar, you know, ending the chorus there. Ooh. Kind of slow moving, slow paced. Because after the first verse and chorus, I kind of just, mm, I'm like, not that I hate it, but like, it feels like a filler track, more of a filler track to me. Because you see, the second chorus just sounds almost, if not the same as the first chorus. I wish there was more of a change. Maybe him singing a different style, like a different vocal line, or the instrumentation being thicker. But I guess it's meant to be very simplistic in a way. Like, you know, there's some hard hitting tracks and some softer ones, and some hard softer ones, and give that contrast in the album. But for me, this, mm, I'm on the fence on this song. Yeah. As compared to I Want You Around and All Your Fault. Well, okay, interesting. The filtered vocals there. Yeah, a little bit stagnant and in the final chorus as well. I can imagine this part again, you know, like in a, in a concert, someone can be playing the instrument in the background, like improvising. Well, I'm not sure what that instrument is. It's cool. All right, now we go to the next track. All about you. One. Okay. 
Because it's like after the breakup Because all your fault is the breakup Oh The instrumentation in VJZ hooks me in Okay, it kind of gets stagnant after a while It's similar to Running Through The Rain where after the first verse and chorus it kind of just lacks a different layer of colour to it and yeah, unfortunately for me it doesn't hit right Okay, this might be the saving part of it with local coming in I like that, the rap very simplistic collaboration as well with this one where Loco just takes the bridge I wish when the, you know, the, the bass notes kick in right here and then it could build up more so Like here, this part could have like an uh, underlying drum beat right, to make it more hype but so far I'm, I'm guessing, I'm seeing from what his body of work is he seems to want to make it more soft you know, even if it's hip hop, it's still a bit soft and not so hard hitting, and that's okay. You know, but that's just not my really my taste of music. Let me know what you think. If this is yours, do tell me in the comment section below. All right, now we go with "Love the Way," featuring J Park and Punch Nello. I'm guessing it's more hype. I mean, the fact that you know you have J Park in it. Yes. Oh, I love that background, the love the way you feel Definitely feels, this feels worth being like, had they had like a third single, this would definitely hit for me Oh, mmm Something about the mixing of, of that note, the vocal run going down Sounds too auto-tuned, like I can literally hear the the note changing No, mm -mm. I, I don't love that Yeah, this is what I'm talking about, this kind of build-up ending With like a layer with, you know, ad-libs and all that Ooh. Same thing again, I guess it sounds intentional With the pitch and then the modulation I, hmm, not a fan of that Yeah, who is doing that ad lips that has that auto-tune so heavy on it? Now we go to Falling In Love, 3, 2, 1 I like the echoiness, the reverb Again with the simplistic instrumentation Well, I guess it's like a cycle of love. So this part is where he's falling in love again. Definitely like as a second to last track on the album, I can appreciate that it's very soft. Like it's softer than what, you know, has been, that's come before. So I can appreciate that. And then it goes back into the chorus, with a little bit of the ad lib at the back. I wish it was a little bit louder Again, like, I feel there's an issue at least for me with like some of the tracks sounding a bit too like a filler track and too stagnant for me after the first verse and first chorus But by all means, you know, if his fans love it if you love it, you know, tell me about it Right, I'd love to hear your opinion about this Now we go to our last track When You Fall when is it going to be softer as an outro track? Seems to be, you know, it's just guitar I love the ballad-like sound of it Especially this part with the keys Definitely fits an outro track I somewhat like this one compared to the other filler, filler tracks that I was saying Because this at least has, you know one moment really calm, ballad like, and then now it's it, there's some build up also, and then it goes back down again. And it's like a bit of a surprise at every turn. Oh, I love this outro with a bit of like the strings. 
And then it's built up. Oh. I like this. This this is definitely my up my area. Wow, well, this seems like a really long song for an outro track. Wow. I like it's the way it's layered. Yeah, so like the layering itself, you know, what words they choose to to sing in the on the you know layers above the melody surprises me. Wow, I enjoy that. Not so keen on this muffled, filtered vocal here. It seems kind of jarring to the track itself. Overall, I like the album. I I think it's a good effort from him. Yeah. Clearly, it achieves a purpose. You know, we see a different side of him. Uh, more melancholic, moody, um, darker tones, uh, especially, uh, especially with the trap side of him. Yeah, my issue is that some of the tracks feel a bit filler track-ish to me because it's just stagnant. They lack much of any color after the first and first verse and first chorus. I wish, you know, there can be some building up upon on the melodies, or you know, change up in the the way it's, the rhythm is, right? Um, but as a body of work, I can see where the message is. It's really clear to me. Um, and yeah, it's just like the cycle of love in a sense. And yeah, there are, there are some tracks that I would definitely playlist. In terms of all the collaborations, I love the one with the Vita because you know, it definitely goes beyond just a fixed structure of music, but there's intertwining involved. So that's my take on this album as a, as a whole body of work. Do let me know in the comments below what you think. Now we'll go to the showcase stage, which is him debuting on M Countdown as a soloist. Oh, I love that they, with live vocals taking a higher place. Yes. Some of this matches more of the music video itself. I guess we just this the choreography matches it really well. You know, it's light on your feet. Yeah. But the set pieces, whoa, they definitely pulled through for this showcase stage. Because typically, if I'm not wrong, AOMG artists never go on music shows, right? In general. Yeah. I'm glad they, like I said, they pushed him because they know that his audience is more of the general public, um, pop, radio, you know. Yay, they had Grey on. I wish the live vocals could have been louder. Because he's not really doing any dance, so he, he could have been louder. It's not leveled, not balanced enough with yu gi mic. I can sense a slight bit of nerves, especially when with live vocals. Just now, when you sing the high notes, but understandably, this is his debut stage, so definitely there'll be some nerves, right? Not bad as a debut stage. I hope to see him do the other track with the uh, Vita. Uh, I want you around. I. Or, or maybe even, you know, hopefully Love The Way with Jay Park and Punch Nello. I would love to see how these tracks translate live with the whole full choreography. But I somehow the choreography for this song fits better than what the music video did. Um, which, yeah, um, I don't weird, right? But at least for me, that's how I see it. Uh, but do let me know in the comments what you think. I definitely think it's not bad of a, you know, debut, right? Especially he's treading into uncharted territories for him. So definitely there's a lot more to explore and especially for the label itself. I guess this is their first mainstream artist, right? Um, other than Ehi, I guess. But Ehi, it's... Um, she's also not really that mainstream. He is more mainstream than her, so... Um, I would say, yeah, um, it's a good step. I'm glad that they're supporting him in that direction and not changing, say, like, make him fit more of their image or their, or what, you know, 
Jay Park style, but you know, definitely giving him exploration and you know, still pushing him to the general public. So that in itself, I really enjoy. I hope to see a different side of him the next time around. Like he said, you know, he wants to explore different things and grow from you know the different albums and different body of work. I'd love to see that. That's pretty much it for my commentary today. I really appreciate what you've you know shared with me about for Bam Bam's um, video. And I really appreciate all the comments and all the discussion that's going on uh, and information that you've gave to me. And do let me know in the comment section what you want me to talk about next. Um, any new, any upcoming comebacks that you want me to talk about and also your thoughts on Yu-Gi-Oh! With that said, thank you very much and catch you on the next one.